focus on the procedure of all wine, uh, but I will report on the other two wines in detail and what has been done there. Um, I also thought that if we take three wines, go a little bit into the background and, and detail on where the grapes are grown um, and the composition of the blend, it also give you an idea on how the winemakers think and what they do in each other. All three of these wines in the are from individual properties. All the grapes are grown on that property. And so it's not as in the instance at Nidaberg where they can put together a blend of say three or five wines, but those wines will come from different pro properties in different areas. So at least these wines give you a bit of an indication of the style and uh, the quality of wines that are produced in these areas. The first area is as you can see, the, just below the, the red arrow, it's uh, called Le Mans, and it is situated near Cape Agalas, which is the most southern point of Africa. So you can imagine here on your right hand side, the cold uh, Atlantic Ocean, Ocean, on the left hand side, Indian Ocean, and that's where the two oceans meet. Uh, in the early 2000s, they started developing that property and since have uh, created really very interesting ones. This is an aerial view of the property. As you can see, it's about five, six kilometers from the ocean. Um, they also built that huge dam, so you can imagine that that also plays an inf uh, as an influence uh, on, on the grapes and the quality of the grapes that are grown on this property. Um, the name of this wine is Snowbush, Le Mont Snowbush. Uh, and that's just a picture of the actual plant that was named uh, from, I'm sure, in one of the previous workshops. You have got a bit more information about the diversity of plants in the Western Cape. Uh, and that is one of our indigenous plants that, that grows in that area. Uh, about the wine and the, and the property itself, you can see that the soils are mainly uh, from sandstone and Shale origin with a little bit of gravelly soils, decomposed granite patches in between. Uh, because of the sandy soils, they do supplementary irrigation. We find that it's quite interesting um, in the fact that about the average temperature, um, fairly sort of moderate maximum temperatures, and nice and quite low temperatures. Uh, during the growing or the ripening period from um, <coughs> January through till, till March. Uh, the important thing, that, thing there is that this area would harvest the grapes about three weeks later than we would harvest them in the fall, summer, or spring because of the cooler average temperatures. You look at the relatively lower rainfall, so it will spill quite a lot. Um, and I think if, if you look at the wine, if you taste the wine, you will see that sort of the cooling effect of the wind, the ocean, uh, plays a major role on the style of this one. It's just a breakdown on the, um, the blend. You can see there's 54% silver rump, 28% Nouvelle, 13% Cendelor, 3% Juni. Um, the reason why the blend is Built around the varietal, so the blanc obviously gives you a bit, uh, not a bit, gives you some very nice uh, fruit there in, in that area. Up to the right peak, uh, a little bit of greener tones there as well as winter melon. Uh, you can expect that Nouvelle will be sort of a more spicy and herbaceousness. Uh, Semillon maybe with a little bit of a, a citrusy touch to it. Uh, and being you near, I think, also just gives you nice fruit, a bit of floral note. Uh, and then put together, they aged it for uh, nine months on the lease, and about 18% of the wine was uh, left, fermented and left in the barrel for the year. One of the advantages of making wine in that area, as I mentioned, is that you have a much cooler average temperature, so it actually means that you can reach full ripeness on those grapes without having very high alcohol, alpha level, you can see this wine least uh, potential uh, or ripeness of 50 or more than 40% alcohol, which means that over such a long period, you get a really full development of flavors in the grapes. In our area, in Paul, you would hardly 
uh, it was such a long period of time, the writing period, you would probably end up with 16, 17 percent of people. We are making uh, wines from grapes in those areas. You <coughs> also see that how these cooler areas um, uh, can actually produce white wine with the potential to age quite well. This wine is 2009 vintage, and I think it's still very nice, crisp, and fresh, and uh, definitely has the potential to keep for another couple of years. Is it the current release? Yeah. This wine has just recently won a handful of trophies and medals. So this is the current one. So how long does it stay in the barrel? As I said, it's at um, nine months. Eighteen percent with nine months. Okay, so the next one um, is the Grand Plaisir from Plaisir de Mol, as I mentioned, that's where I work. Um, that is uh, situated in the Paul region. Now, Paul is compared to Salabar, is compared to the Lamont area, is totally uh, surrounded by mountains. So, we are on the slopes of the valley, of, of the mountain there in, in the Transhoek Valley. Um, the vineyards face uh, south, southeast, which means we get morning sun, midday sun, and then with the mountains at the back. You can see the mountain there. We do have the advantage of uh, earlier shade in, in the higher part of the farm. Uh, we also have the advantage that we can plant uh, our vineyards at altitudes of 400, 550 meters above sea level. So we, we have to make use of these advantages to, to try and create wines which we feel that uh, gives us the expression uh, of, of, of the region without ending up with wines with 15, 16 percent alcohol. Uh, and that, as I promised you, is not too difficult to do in the Western Cape. <coughs> so you can see the vineyards going right up there, it's about 550 meters above sea level. And that's a view from the top, looking down into the Paul region, Paul Valley. When we started the cellar uh, <coughs> in the early 90s, 1990s, we uh, contacted Paul Bontalia, the Chateau Margot as a consultant. I was lucky enough to spend a vintage uh, at Chateau Margot as well. And um, he used to come at, I think, 2005 was the last time that uh, he visited us. At the moment, we don't have a further relationship with him. Okay, let's get to the wine. Um, Already heard from the Lalo, we're quite adventurous when it comes to putting varietals together and make our blends. Um, this is a six varietal blend, uh, all five Bordeaux varietals, and then a bit of Shiraz as well. Uh, and I can just give you my point of view on why I, I use specific varietals in, in this blend. Um, just a little bit about the farm. I've uh, explained about the mountain. Of course, we have a uh, gravelly soil good water retention. Uh, we don't need to do any irrigation in those vineyards. Uh, although lower down on the farm, sandier soil, we need to do supplementary irrigation. Important thing there is, if you look at average temperature, you have temperatures running up in the 30s. Um, and of course, as I mentioned as well, now the difficulty is to try and manage the vineyards and the grapes so that you can get full ripeness, you want to have soft tannins, but you don't want to end up with, with these high alcohol wines. Um, the advantage of high altitudes and all of that, of course, helps a little bit with that. Also, also the fact that you blend. So some wines will, will have lower alcohol than, than other wines, and we try and end up with a wine with around 14% alcohol. The wine itself, uh, you can see the blend, 40% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Cabernet Franc, 15% Shiraz, and then 10% each of Malbec, Merlot, and uh, Petit Verde. What uh, the reason why I select 
those specific varietals have in a soil, obviously it would like that to be the backbone, to give them more power and to make sure that it has the, the potential to age for many years. Cabernet Franc gives it a little bit more to floral, uh, red berry fruit, raspberry <coughs> fruit to the wine. Shiraz, a little bit of sweetness on the palate. We also do to release these wines fairly young, so three years after they, uh, the grapes were harvested. Um, so I usually feel that by adding a bit of Shiraz to the blend, you can actually get a little bit of a soft sweetness to the, to the palate uh, and just sort of polish the wine a little bit because make it a little bit more accessible uh, and therefore it can be enjoyed at, a, at such a young age. The Malbec, we get very nice sort of plummy fruit in the Malbec. Madlock is usually gives us also nice red fruit and a little bit of uh, eucalyptus. And then the Tibeto is just <coughs> most of our wines to add a little bit for color, it gives structure, nice tannin. Uh, it doesn't really have uh, a very high acidity, um, so we don't use it for that, but um, it is really something that sort of lifts the color and gives the wine a more youthful look. The cellar is situated in the Salabosch area, but closer to uh, Klappertz, which is uh, about 15 kilometers just outside of um, Salabosch. Um, it's also one of the old French Huguenot farms, one of the traditional <coughs> farms, a big lovely homestead. It is situated against the mountain as well, it's facing the wall uh, easterly. Um, if we look at the the farm itself, once again, nice decomposed granite soil, red soil, um, the vineyard that uh, Saku used to harvest his grapes from were all planted in around about 1986 and I think 1987. Uh, you can also see the temperature there, quite high, but a little bit lower than uh, the vineyard at the Sierra Mill, mainly because it does have exposure to the to table, way, table base, so it does have uh, Wind, a bit of fog in the evening, uh, and the rainfall slightly lower because it doesn't have the dew effect of the mountain in the The blend is a blend of 75% marrow and then 25% carbon soil. Uh, and this is a blend that stuff has been making, and winemakers have been making for many, many years, and that's sort of uh, almost you know, fixed in stone. The blend would be dominated by, by marrow which is quite uncommon for uh, blends in, in South Africa. And I think it's a very, very nice wine. Really nice, ripe, smooth tannins, a bit of the meaty, uh, dried uh, tomato paste uh, character, nice fruit, very soft tannins, very sort of sweet polish to it in the mouth. Uh, 
Uh, and I think you know, from a blending point of view, maybe the wine just does it more interesting, gives it more layers, gives it more, more uh, character, uh, and make, also make it as the wine mature and age, it gives the wine uh, sort of a possibility to sort of change with time because different uh, varietals with different types of wood will dominate or play different roles over time. 